Hello, this is Jason. Back with another a walk and talk with Jason. And I don't think this is going to be on the uh, walk and talk with Jason channel that I made. I'm repurposing a Wicked Vlogs channel. And my stupid uh, iced tea is falling out of my pants again. <laughs> Let's see if I can take a drink of this tea and make it a little lighter. Mm. This is 32 ounces of unsweetened, freshly brewed Lipton iced tea. And it's a uh, a little heavy to carry in my waistband. I'll try again. Why is it got to be difficult? Try to tuck my shirt in to help hold it. It's not working. Right, we're going, going under the shirt. There we go. Maybe a little water bottle on the skin will help contain it. <clears throat> and I'm getting a, a little bit of a late start. And I forgot to start my walk timer. <clears throat> It is 6.42 p.m. So I'll probably be getting there. We won't be able to see the sunset. I didn't bring my drone. I did bring my uh, headlight so that I'll be able to see on my way home. Hello. And today I went and ate at uh, Fa Viet. Fa. Fa Viet. Had some good Vietnamese food. I'm posting that video on my main Jason Michael Phillips channel. And it's, it's kind of weird. So renaming my channel, my full name Jason Michael Phillips <laughs> really the only time anyone ever said my full name be like my mom when I was in trouble you know if you said if she said your full name you knew you did something wrong <laughs> Jason Michael Phillips <laughs> get over here right now right now you're in big trouble big trouble that was always the <laughs> my threat you're in big trouble oh my goodness big trouble oh my god that was the worst being in big trouble <laughs> there's there's never really any punishment it was always just the threat of the threat of being in trouble <clears throat> I did get grounded a few times though. And she confiscated my computer. <laughs> Once one time I got I got in big trouble. I don't even remember what I did, but she unhooked my whole computer and like the printer and you know took the whole thing and put it like in her car or in the shed or something. And I'm like, mom, next time. Just unplug this power cable. Just take this power cable and I won't be able to use the computer. You don't have to unhook everything. Because <laughs> it took me all this time to hook everything back up. Like, come on. All you got to do is just take the power cable. It'll disable everything. <clears throat> and that's funny. So yeah, the Vietnamese food is good. Huge big bowl of pho. And, uh, what was it? Shaken, shaken beef. 
like my beef, beef shaken, not stirred. <clears throat> Vietnamese food's pretty good. Seems to be healthy. Vietnamese food's pretty healthy. The way that they prepare everything, they're not, it's all pretty plain. Like even in Vietnam, things will come out pretty plain, but they'll have stuff on the table, like some whatever fish sauce or some vinegar with chilies in it. So you kind of like season it to your taste, but it all comes out pretty plain. Unlike uh, Thai food, which is a, they spice things up and like I, I've been looked like a lot of Thai street food. It's actually not very healthy. They cook all this stuff up in like vegetable seed oil. Seed oils are not very good for you. But I mean, there are healthy Thai food options. <clears throat> but they do like to fry a lot of stuff up, but not quite as bad as the uh, Philippines. Philippines seems to have the least healthiest cuisine where they, they do, they fry everything. A lot of fried chicken and fried this and fried that. Fried up and breaded and seed oils. <clears throat> And like out of all of them, it seems like probably Japan, Japan and Vietnam probably be the healthiest, cleanest food cuisine. A lot of, a lot of raw, raw fish, sushi in Japan. And ramen. Ramen's kind of like pho. <clears throat> Pretty warm out. What is it? 90, 91 degrees right now. A little warm. A little on the warm side. If I could wake up early in the morning and walk like right at sunrise it's only like 70 it's in the 70s It'd be a lot cooler but taking these walks around the hottest part of the day it's kind of extra conditioning prepare myself for the Southeast Asian heat, which my first stop will be Bangkok, mid-December. But even mid-December in Bangkok, it's still 90 degrees. <clears throat> so it'll be just like this. Actually, it'll be, it'll feel hotter because the humidity is like 60, 70% there, or here it's like, uh, probably today it's probably 40 percent we can get we can get up into that 67 percent range here but it's just not all the time where it's always humid in bangkok thailand southeast asia in general on the vietnam the north of vietnam could get cold in the 50s i think I don't think it snows there, but I don't know for sure. Maybe up in the mountains it does, but I don't think like Hanoi, I don't think it snows. It probably gets into the 40s, 50s. <clears throat> snows in some areas of Japan, Korea, and Korea. Those are also places that I would like to explore. <clears throat> Can't wait. Can't wait. Mm -mm -mm. 
And I'm always, I, I think I could just like go now, I, but <laughs> I can't rush it. I gotta take time. Like right now I've been selling stuff. So it's gonna take forever just to sell all the junk that I've accumulated through my whole life. <clears throat> I've gotta sell everything. Even all my clothes, it's hard to, you know, I'm gonna sell all the clothes that I can and then I'll probably end up donating thousands of dollars of stuff to Salvation Army or Goodwill or whatever. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to sell all I can. Got a lot of Duluth trading clothes I listed on Facebook Marketplace, which I probably listed them too high. Need to probably get them down to twelve, ten dollars a shirt before anyone will buy them. I think I listed some at twelve, but most of my at at fifteen. I'm still not listed my. Emotiva stereo stuff. I have my speakers listed. I haven't really got much interest except for some people on eBay asking if I could ship them to like United Kingdom. I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't even have boxes to put them in. Just ship them 10 miles away, let alone across the pond. Oh. And I got like bedroom stuff. Still got a big, huge computer desk. That should probably sell, but I'm uh, still kind of using it. I set junk on it. I sell all that junk off of it and then, then I could sell it. <laughs> uh, so much stuff, man. And all like the kitchen stuff. <sighs> Pots and pans and blenders and toasters and air fryer. I'll have to, you know, what I'm using that right now. Got two Instant Pots. <clears throat> I'm not quite ready to sell all that stuff yet. I'm just hanging on. If I ever get laid off, that, that will really ignite the, the fire to sell everything. I'm trying to get down to as minimal as I can. <clears throat> if I got laid off, that would be, that'd be go time. Go time. I gotta hang in there until I'm 50 years old. And the only reason I picked 50 is because that's how old you have to be to get a retirement visa in Thailand. Although now they have these destination Thailand visas where you could stay there. It's like a five year visa, you could stay up to uh, 360 days, basically. After 180 days, you either have to get another 180 day extension, or if you leave the country and come back, that counts as resetting it. So every time you leave and come back, you get a 180 day stamp on your passport. And you could just keep leaving and coming back every 180 days. For five years. But with those, you have to have, you have to show that you're working, that you're allowed to work remotely. Which a lot of people have just 
created like an LLC company and write, you know, I could have Jason LLC, Jason Remote Work Company LLC. I, the CEO of Jason Remote Company LLC, give Jason the permission to work remotely in Thailand. Thank you. And they're like, yep, that's good. But I think you might have to show, well, no, you don't. You just have to have like $15,000 in a bank account and show that you work remotely. It's kind of weird. <clears throat> but there's also a long-term visa for, uh, for something professionals. Like if you work for a, uh, a company that's listed on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ, a publicly listed company, so a big company, which I do, and they give you permission to work in Thailand, which my company, at least in my role, will not give me permission specifically. But we do have documents showing Remote work is allowed if you're a remote employee, which I am. And it applies to other positions besides mine because I work in support. They don't allow me to work outside the country for some reason. I think it's just like our VP or director didn't want it. So it shut down our organization from being able to take advantage of this policy that every other department can take advantage of. But I could just get that remote work policy and maybe even my manager would write a note saying that I'm allowed to work remotely, even though it's not officially allowed, just so I can get this visa because it's a 10 year visa. Although the visa costs, I think it's $1,500. So it's still, it's only 150 bucks a year. And that's cheaper than the destination Thailand visa. I think those are like $250 a year or something. But it also exempts you from having to pay taxes in Thailand. So that's a nice thing. And it uh, only has like a uh, reporting, like look, you have to report to the government every 90 days on most visas, but on this long-term one, it's only once a year you have to report. And if you leave on a plane and come back, that counts as like a report. <clears throat> And this new watch I got monitors my walking pace. So if I slow down, it'll tell me. It has like steps per minute or also monitors the heart rate. It does all kinds of stuff. Fitbit, it's got Fitbit built into it. It's the uh, Pixel Watch 2. And I also got the Pixel 9 Pro XL, so it's pretty good. I like the Fitbit features. I think that part of it, the fitness part, is better than the Apple, Apple stuff. But overall, the Apple Watch is still better than this one. Like, Apple Watch can run like so many, so many more apps. Like I had, I did find one that did my watch, so I, for or my uh, my Tesla. So I got a little Tesla. You can unlock your car and open the trunk and stuff like that with your watch. But the one that was on the iPhone did, did more. 
like you can make your watch a key. So if you didn't have your phone or the card on you, you could just use your watch to get it in your car and start your car. But I don't think that this one will do it. At least the one that I got for free. <laughs> but it's nice. They're, they're pretty similar. The big advantage that Apple has is just being in the Apple ecosystem and all my, the majority of my family and friends are on Apple. So like iMessage and being able to airdrop stuff. But I mean, I don't do that stuff very often. Mostly when I'm, yeah, I don't airdrop stuff much. When I was recording stuff on my phone, like making videos with my phone, I would airdrop from my phone to my MacBook. And that was convenient, pretty fast. But I don't use my phone anymore. So the quality of these DJI cameras are much better than the latest iPhone. Even though the iPhone costs twice as much, <clears throat> like the low light capabilities, if you compare it to the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 or even this Action 5 Pro, these are much better. You can go watch some videos if you, if you want some proof. <clears throat> now for taking photos, the iPhone's better. <clears throat> and then even comparing this uh, Pixel 9 Pro XL I got compared to the iPhone 16 Pro Max, I would say that the Pixel takes better photos I like how it processes them. It does have, the Pixel has three 48 or 50 megapixel camera sensors where the 16 has two 48 megapixel sensors and one 12 megapixel. And they just upgraded one this year. So before on the 15, it was just one 48 megapixel and two 12 megapixel. And then they made the wide angle camera this year on the 16, a 48 megapixel. And then next year they'll upgrade the telephoto lens to 48 megapixel probably. <laughs> they do slow incremental upgrades just so they can say that they've improved something. They don't want to improve everything all at once. And they'll have nothing to improve for next year. <clears throat> and I'm not a huge fan of that camera button that they added from I've not used it I've not held a 16 pro in my hands but from what everyone's saying that it's like not that useful it doesn't really add any functional functionality and it actually gets in the way and sometimes people are bumping it and like switching camera modes or zoom or whatever like accidentally If uh, Steve Jobs was around, you'd say, you're holding it wrong. <laughs> uh, that was back in the uh, iPhone like 3G or something when that phone first came out. The little antenna bands on the phone. When you hold the phone, it would short out the antenna and your calls would drop. So that's when they sent everyone a free bumper eventually after a few months but <laughs> steve jobs was quoted in an email of saying that people were just holding the phone wrong but there was a lot of people holding the phone wrong and dropping calls so eventually they just that was when they gave everyone a little bumper <clears throat> little bumper case. <sighs> Feels good out here. When you get into this forest, the temperature drops. You get the extra shade. You're not directly in the sun. 
<sighs> the things are getting so close on the between the pixel and the iPhone. I pretty much got all the same apps. Uh, so it's really just personal preference. But I did get this Pixel 9 Pro XL for $800 on eBay. Guy had only used it for a week. And it's a 512 gigabyte model. So, like, what's the, that'd probably be like $1,600, I'm guessing, for an iPhone 16 Pro Max with 512 gigabytes of storage. So I got this one for like half the price. And I would say it's 90 plus percent as good all around. I'd say the camera for photos is better. Camera for video is not better. <clears throat> the iPhone 16 Pro and 15 Pro both have the ability to record in ProRes, which is like industry standard video codec with like a flat log profile for color grading. It's like professional level stuff. Although I played around with that and like the files are so, files are so big that I never really used it. It was kind of cool that it existed, but if I was making a big project, I'd do it. But oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, look at the sign. It's funny. Funny, funny. Funny, funny. <sighs> Less than a month for that stuff to be over and done with. Can't wait. Uh, I had to delete the X app for my mental health. Uh, and I've felt much better. That was probably like two weeks ago when I deleted the X app. Twitter, formerly known as Twitter. Just such a cesspool of negativity. All I look at now is Instagram and Facebook, occasionally threads. It's all in the uh, meta, meta universe. I deleted TikTok too. TikTok's another mind numbing cesspool of dumbness. <laughs> uh, I'm not a huge fan of short form content. It's like so, it's the lowest common denominator of humanity. <laughs> uh, not a fan. I usually just prefer listening to longer stuff like podcasts. I listen to Lex Friedman podcast. He usually has interesting guests on. I don't listen to every single one. I skipped the uh, Trump one. But any of the tech people or people talking about biology. He's had Michael Saylor on there talking about Bitcoin for four hours. I listened to the whole thing. Fascinating. So I like longer form content you can't really get any valuable information out of anything in a minute people are just wanting to watch one minute long videos with 50 cuts in that one minute <laughs> 50 one and a half second clips we're about 
one mile out from the end of our walk. I'm not gonna make a video on the way back today because it's just gonna be so dark. Won't be able to see anything anyway, so. Just walk to the end, sit on my bench, bid you all farewell. Should be there in about 15 minutes. If we can get through all the traffic jam of people. So all these nice. Uh -oh. It's kind of off center there, probably for a while. Yeah, so 50 is the end goal for retirement for me. I'm not going to work past my 50th birthday. But things could happen between now and then. So I'm just trying to get my life as minimal as I can. <clears throat> and that way, if I get laid off or that's the main thing, I could get laid off or fired or whatever <laughs> I'd say getting laid off or fired is the main thing I'm preparing for some of my friends have been laid off already <clears throat> they got hired around the time that I got hired in 2007 I've been there a long time Or if Bitcoin four or five X's from where it's at now, which is around 63,000, that would put it, you know, if it gets up to 250, 300,000 coin, that would definitely put me in a position to be able to quit my job. That could happen within the next year by like next October, November 2025. It's not out of the realm of possibilities. In fact, that would be more in line with how it has behaved the last three having cycles. The first cycle at like 14 next something crazy and then the next one it was like oh uh, I don't even want to quote but somewhere between 7 and 10 X and the last one was like 5 or 6 X <clears throat> so would not be out of the realm of what's happened historically and if it does oh boy oh boy <laughs> I mean if it does I'll be sitting pretty I'll also be regretting not selling my house and putting it all in Bitcoin <laughs> although all the stuff that I am selling in my house, I'm putting in Bitcoin. And I've just been dollar cost averaging now. I've been investing about, I think it's like $385 a week in the Bitcoin. So that kind of smooths out the uh, 
highs and lows. Don't have to try to time it. And the dollar cost averaging on strike is free, so you don't pay any fees. No fees for dollar cost averaging. Although I don't really have, I don't have too much on strike, like 4,000 bucks, 4,000 bucks in Bitcoin. Most of my Bitcoin is uh, in my Robinhood account. Robinhood has a pretty low spread. It was actually the lowest cost spread to buy Bitcoin when I bought it. As before, Strike started doing the free dollar cost averaging, which they just started doing that like in July, pretty recently. So once again, talking about my favorite subjects, I should just rename my channel Bitcoin, Bangkok, and <laughs> what else do I talk about? Bitcoin, Bangkok, Bitcoin and Bangkok, two things I'd love to talk about. But I also did another, I did a four day fast a week after I did a five day fast. And I might try to make it do it like every week until I get down to my, my goals, which I don't really have a weight goal. I just more have a, a body composition goal as I look in the mirror. So I think I'm going to do a weekend only eating on the weekends so from Friday at 4 p.m. that's when I get off work until Sunday night at midnight that's my window of eating and then I'm not gonna eat from Monday at 12 a.m. until Friday 4 p.m. And I'll keep doing that until probably take a couple months to get down where I want to get down to. So I got down on this last fast, my 269. So I'd say 200 is my ultimate. If I wanted to set like a weight goal, which I already just said I didn't. <laughs> but that's really what I'm shooting for. So, 69 pounds requires about 69 days of fasting, I'd say. And if I'm fasting five days a week, four and a half, how long is that going to take? To get to 69. 69 divided by 4.5 equals. Hey Google, what's 69 divided by 4.5? What's 69 divided by 4.5? 69 divided by 4.5. Fifteen point three three weeks it would take to lose that using that, which is almost four months, right? Yeah. So 
So I'm not gonna be 200 pounds by the time I get to Bangkok. <laughs> But we'll see. I'm just trying to kick it into high gear. And I, I might lose more than a pound a day if I keep up my walks. I could probably lose a pound a day fasting if I am not walking. So it might take, you know, three months. Which. What is it, October? I'm going to be in Bangkok in a little over two months, two and a half months. So we'll see where I get to. And also, I'm throwing in a trip to Ohio. I'll be eating food there. My cousin makes delicious pies. So I'll be indulging. In Ohio. And if I try to keep my food even on the weekends as low carb as possible, I could stay in ketosis the whole time and pounds will fall off like they did when I was on a carnivore diet. Although it took me a whole year to lose 90 pounds on a carnivore diet. We'll see, as long as I'm making progress. That's all that really matters. Oh. All right, made it to my happy place. I don't know why that likes to go all the way up like that. Set you up here. There we go. How long did that take? 44 minutes. Go two and a half miles. 4,772 steps. I did start this late too. I was already halfway down my block. It's already paused. Automatically pauses. That's nice. I'm gonna take my hat off. Put my sunglasses away. And I could stop this recording. Put this away. This wool headband it's great sweatband it really helps keep sweat out of my eyes oh oh, oh feels good feels good backpack off great Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. <sighs> oh, so that's about gonna wrap things up. <sighs> I'm just gonna sit here and watch the sun go down. Cool off for five or 10 minutes. We're at 48 minutes recording time. There's the sunset views. Oh, so refreshing. So it's Sunday and it is about 7.30. So I've got till midnight tonight to eat and drink what I want. I got the rest of that Vietnamese food. I'll probably finish off around nine o'clock. The pho. 
be far. And then I'm going to fast again till Friday at 4 p.m. And then I take my Monjaro shot on Wednesday. So that helps suppress the hunger. So I just got to make it to Wednesday and then things get easy. It's not been too bad. I do start to get dizzy around day four or five. That's why I broke the fast this last time. Getting dizzy. That's probably just taking my blood pressure medicine when I'm not eating. Oh. What are they yelling? Weird kids. I think they're yelling something about a toilet. <laughs> uh, well, that's going to wrap things up. I'm just going to sit here and cool off. But thanks for watching. Thanks for coming to another YouTube channel. I know I've bounced people around to a bunch of different YouTube channels the past month. But... I finally decided I'm just going to take over Wicked Shrapnel and Wicked Vlogs and just keep the channels that I had in the first place because growing a channel from scratch not going to happen for me. Not the way YouTube is anymore. If I was starting a channel back in 2010 again, I could do it. Not anymore. <clears throat> All right. Well, thanks for watching and be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Drop a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, set it to all, all notifications or else even if you subscribe, YouTube doesn't notify you of all videos unless you hit that bell and hit all. So you have to subscribe, hit the bell, choose all, and then you get notified of each video in case you didn't know that. YouTube makes it harder than ever for people to see your videos. All right, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Take it easy.